Shalom Chavarim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And friends, uh, this evening we will not be on our live broadcast. Uh, we're going back to doing at least part of our videos uh, on back on a pre-recorded basis there, mainly due to quality. From what we're understanding, the live stream is being buffered quite a bit. Probably uh, censored is one reason why we're running into trouble uh, with our buffering. Uh, the video is just not coming as quite as crisp as they should be. Shabbat Live will continue to be live, though, on Friday evenings at 10.30 p.m. Uh, here in Prague and, of course, 4.30 p.m. in the uh, eastern uh, United States there and, of course, respectively around the world. Uh, and we will still continue to do Israeli News Live live on YouTube uh, on certain days of the week there. I haven't quite decided which days of the week to do that as of yet. Uh, naturally, if there's something breaking, we'll go live immediately with that. And of course, possibly maybe uh, three days a week, something like Mondays, Wednesdays, and of course, Friday going to Shabbat live there. So we'll just have to see how that works out. Uh, also be working, working on a broadcast for Patreon for those of you that watch on Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. Uh, surely that may be a blessing to many of you guys. There are some insights that the Lord has revealed to me uh, about the return of the two witnesses. I want to share there uh, today some very specific things that I think is going to be uh, of an interest to many of you guys. Uh, we'll probably run it there for a couple of days on Patreon. I don't know if I'll get into any issues there uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, um, wow, pick a time, rem remind me later. I hate it when they pops up these messages. Anyway, but uh, we will, uh, depending on what we speak about on this broadcast on Patreon will be whether or not we allow it to air on Danuna Institute or not. Uh, so not really sure as of yet. Uh, but we'll just wait to see how that broadcast goes later this evening. Uh, getting into the uh, news today, it is official. Uh, Ivanka Trump declares Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Uh, well, that's really to me, it's not the major news. We have news breaking all over about the U.S. Embassy officially opening in Jerusalem. Uh, a lot of protests going on. Uh, as far as the Jewish people, there are smaller protests, but uh, it is official. The U.S. Embassy has moved to Jerusalem. Uh, that's something that I'm not opposed to of myself. I think that the embassy should be in Jerusalem. Tel Aviv really makes no sense, uh, if you ask me, but... Uh, uh, but then again, I also believe it is part of a new world order move. And what Trump is doing, this being touted by so many as a great thing, is only a Roman uh, agenda. So very interesting to say the least there. Let's listen to what Ivanka Trump has to say here, if it'll even play for us here. I'm not really sure if it will. Let me just try to refresh the page there uh, where she actually speaks about the move. Ivanka Trump speaks there saying that they welcome them to the uh, embassy in Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. Uh, I will say this, U.S. embassy that they use, they're actually using a building that's already been uh, used by the U.S. government for quite extensive period of time there. So whether or not it's, uh, we know it's an official move there, but it's just, it's not like a, a new location or anything of that ma manner there. Uh, also, we have uh, several other things. We have Judge uh, Janine saying Trump fulfilled biblical prophecy by moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. I don't know how that actually fulfills biblical prophecy, but I will say for sure uh, that it is a cyclical maybe event. Uh, the only difference is, is instead of it being Cyrus, they're titling Donald Trump as being a type of Cyrus. Now, I kind of find that a little bit uh, odd because most people that think Cyrus is such a great man, uh, and of course him moving, uh, allowing the Jews to return home to build their build the second temple, uh, certainly was uh, you know a, a miracle in itself. But Cyrus himself still served Marduk, very pagan uh, man to begin with. 
No doubt, though, as we read in our own uh, canon of the Bible there, it was Yahweh that moved him to do this uh, move to allow the Jewish people to return home after their exile for uh, a period of time there. And let's listen into what uh, Judge Janine actually says here about President Trump and his move of the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. Biblical prophecy of the gods worshipped by Jews, Christians, and yes, Muslims, that Jerusalem is the eternal capital of the Jewish state and that the Jewish people finally deserve a righteous, free, and sovereign Israel. Well, we're seeing those type things move forward. The only thing is, is what will the two-state solution look like, or will it actually be a one-state solution? Uh, Fox News also has Senator, Senator Ted Cruz weighing in on this. Let's take a listen to what Senator Senior Ted Cruz son, had to say. Today it's sad, because this is simply recognizing an undeniable truth, that Israel is the undivided, and, and, and Jerusalem is the undivided and eternal capital of Israel. That has been true since 70 years ago today when Israel, the modern state of Israel was created and that was true 3,000 years ago. And the fact that President Trump demonstrated the courage to keep his promise, that is a message heard by our friends and heard by our enemies that America keeps her words and we stand with the nation of Israel. That's incredibly important. Well, one thing I do agree with uh, with Senator Ted Cruz as well, we do stand with Israel. Uh, unfortunately, though, there are some, though, in the government that are doing things, though, that is jeopardizing the safety of the Israeli people. Uh, not so much the moving of the embassy. I think the violence that is happening over in Israel, which today, of course, uh, we'll get into it in just a moment, 40-something 40, 40 Palestinians have been killed uh, in uh, Gaza near the border fence there. I realize that there has been some attempted breaches of the security fence there. Uh, and uh, of course, it has been huge mobs that have been uh, on the very border there. But that is, especially when we're dealing with so many of these uh, Palestinians here that are, that are not armed, uh, you know, whether it's just rocks or whatever. And I understand Israel's right to protect their border. But that is, you know, on the verge of a, a massacre of so many uh, people there along the border there. Uh, even when Israel targets uh, Hamas uh, facilities and headquarters where rockets are being fired into Israel, we normally never see this large of a scale of loss of life. Uh, and speaking of that, we have here pictured on here, this is uh, uh, the marriage chairwoman, Tamar Zandberg. Zandberg said she liked to see Jerusalem divided into an Israeli capital and a Palestinian one, each with its own embassy. Uh, her party, the uh, as it mentions there, the Meretz uh, party of the Israeli government, the, the which is more of a left-wing party there, has boycotted the opening of the U.S. embassy. Not that she is against the opening of the U.S. embassy being in Jerusalem, but rather because she wants to see the city divided into twain uh, with the East Jerusalem going to the Palestinians and West Jerusalem to the Jews. Well, I would have to say to uh, uh, this, uh, this chairwoman here, Ms. Tamar Zandberg, that's exactly what is happening. Although we may be seeing in the, in the limelight of the world today uh, duping the evangelical community into really believing that this is just uh, the entire Jerusalem is being nothing more than set up for Israel in their only capital and no one else is going to have a capital there and there will be no uh, Palestinian capital in Jerusalem. Well, we're only fooling ourselves. Wait till President Trump's plan does come out. We are going to see an East Jerusalem, and it will be a Palestinian uh, authority that will be there. And sadly to say, that's exactly what's going to happen. It is a New World Order agenda. And the moving of embassies into East Jerusalem by uh, Arabic nations will be a reality in the near future with Jerusalem, the old city of Jerusalem, coming, coming under a UN mandate. Uh, now, what my biggest concern is, is that what uh, President Trump is doing here is creating a, a more um, 
a more environment for violence on the Jewish people there and bringing about that violence will actually allow for exactly what Rome would like to see, an international city out of Jerusalem and of course the old city going under a UN control rather than an Israeli control. So this is what's playing out and oddly enough most people don't even get it. All right. Uh, also, we have Jews in uh, uh, Washington, D.C., very small number of Jews there that were protesting today uh, over the U.S. Embassy being open in Jerusalem. Uh, most of the protests that we're seeing are uh, somewhat in a large, uh, excuse me, a small scale as far as the Jewish people protesting uh, against the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. Uh, but nonetheless, it is, uh, it, there are young people in the United States that are protesting the opening of the embassy. Uh, again, I actually uh, appreciate the fact the U.S. has actually put their embassy in Jerusalem. I think it's the way it should have been from the very beginning. Uh, but we'll just have to see how this does develop in the near future. Also, we have a new thing coming out. Ami Stein is reporting on here, breaking Hezbollah leader Nasrallah, an international official, delivered a message to Israeli that if they strike inside Syria once more, the response will be in the heart of Israel. Uh, Hezbollah, definitely a very staunch supporter of the Ar Iranians and uh, the Iranian military and have worked with them uh, in battling against ISIS militants, Al-Qaeda and Al-Nusra inside of Syria to start with and uh, now vowing to strike the heart of Israel if Israel yet again strikes inside of Syria. Well, I'm sure that uh, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu will strike once again in, inside of Syria, again allegedly striking Iranian targets, saying that they're moving closer to his border there. And I'm sure the threat of Nasrallah will not go unanswered today either. And, uh, but... <laughs> You know, guys, I, just, I hate to say it, but I really feel like this is all a play. This is exactly the move they want them to make. Uh, it's no different than what's happening, uh, of course, like I said, over in the Gaza Strip there. Uh, this article here came out saying 40 Palestinians were killed on Monday. French President, or excuse me, French for, France's foreign minister called on Israeli authorities to exercise restraint after more than 40 Palestinians were killed on Monday, said in the U.S. decision to move its embassy to Jerusalem flouted international uh, law. France calls on all actors to show responsibility to prevent any new escalations. Uh, Jean, uh, Jean uh, Yaville Drian uh, said in a statement, France again calls on Israeli authorities to exercise discernment and restraint in the use of force that must be strictly uh, proportionate. And, you know, I, you know, as far as that type of force there on the border with Gaza, you know, I would have to agree with France in that particular issue there. I also see, too, when the IDF is sharing with us there, uh, videos and let me just and, and really in all fairness here I think we need to see both sides of the story here we don't want to just take uh, one side of the story when it comes to this but the IDF has been releasing videos uh, such as this one here today um, uh, having the children right there on the border there uh, you know in this volatile situation and of course, that is definitely not a safe place to be, especially knowing that the Israeli government is firing live rounds in there. Very, very troubling. And uh, also the Israeli IDF has shown where uh, on multiple occasions that there has been attempts to breach the fence itself. This particular video here, I believe, shows that. Uh, yes, you can see them. You can see the, the, the figures running to the fence there. They're trying to breach the fence here and of course get into uh, to Israeli side there. That's a very serious situation uh, for Israel. Now you can see them, they're up there firing the, uh, the, the whatever it is on this particular military truck there. Um, maybe tear gas, not really sure, but we do know Israel is using live rounds as well. And uh, you know, they're throwing fire bombs at the fence, etc. But it, there is, you know, one thing we have to understand, and, and, and this is why I try to be balanced on this issue, 
you know, Israel has only a mile away residential neighborhoods there near this fence here uh, inside of, uh, uh, on the border with Gaza and Israel. And all this rioting and stuff that has been going on there puts these people's lives at risk as well. So, uh, you know, it's, so it's very difficult to deal with the situation. Uh, I, I would still think that tear gas and less lethal means of force could probably be used uh, in order to keep this under control. I do not believe that we need to use such a uh, high risk of violence to try to control uh, the unrest that is happening on the border with Gaza. You know, it kind of reminds me much when the security guard in Israel back there in the Intifada, the Third Intifada, when it was really underway there, when these two young ladies decided to use scissors to attack people at a bus stop. They ended up attacking a Palestinian man, in fact. Uh, but in the case of one, uh, one girl, a, a, a pedestrian, took her down with a chair. And the girl was totally down, didn't, wasn't moving, wasn't getting up. She was injured pretty good with the chair. But then the security officer, the Israeli security officer, actually goes back to her, fires a couple of more rounds into this girl here and kills her. And to me, that's an extreme force. A person's already been disabled and then go in there and shoot a couple of more rounds into them. A 14 year old girl uh, with a pair of scissors, you know, to me is just going a bit too far. And I think that's the same thing we're seeing here. Uh, and now I'm already seeing already that there are up to 54 uh, Palestinians that have been killed in this particular clashes here and also bring a condemnation as well against Hamas. Hamas is definitely inciting this violence on the uh, border with Israel because Hamas, the leaders of Hamas, just do not care how many Palestinians die. And of course, the reason why they have children out here on this border here is because they want children to be killed. They, they're willing to sacrifice their own children uh, for the sake of making it look like, uh, you know, that Israel is even worse than what you could ever possibly imagine. So they send these little kids out there. And what if the little children get caught in a crossfire? You know, so there's just some really, really bad situation here. Very sad, very sad indeed. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Don't forget to support the broadcast. Our address will appear here at the end of the broadcast. You can see on the screen right now. Uh, we do need your help in continuing the work that we do to bring you uh, this important information. Uh, shalom in a world of Ain Shalom.